Welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we'll be solving a problem based on the subject called as the software project management. So uh, in this, you have a, a problem which is based on two actual measurements or two diagrams. So the very first one is AON and with that, uh, we'll solve the CPM that is the critical path method CPM. So uh, let's begin. The problem is very easy. So uh, the diagram, uh, something looks like this, so that we'll just see later. So first of all, let's look into the problem. So just focus here. So you need to draw AON diagram, activity on node, and you need to find the activities on the critical path. So now critical path is that path uh, which takes the longest uh, route and which takes the minimum amount of time for completion of a particular project. So you need to calculate the minimum overall project completion time uh, now uh, you have been given a table with uh, three columns so first column you have the activity so you have eight different activities from A to H and then you have the duration which is given in weeks uh, which is represented by TI so TI is activity completion time so for activity A you have two weeks for completion similarly for activity B you have three weeks for completion activity C you have four weeks for completion and so on now uh, you have a third column that is you have the immediate predecessor so uh, that is nothing but uh, a prior activity to the current activity which just gave rise or which triggered this activity or it can be also assumed that uh, upon this activity this activity got invoked means uh, only after this activity completion you can do this activity or only after activity completion of A and B you can uh, do the activity D and so on. So uh, now uh, you need to start drawing this AON diagram. So before that, whenever uh, you always start a project, you have the very first day for initialization, then planning, then requirement gathering and so on. Now, and uh, these are the uh, consecutive uh, days and activities which are being carried out. Now there is a deadline which is there or which is given by the client for the project submission. So uh, you don't have in this chart. So what you do you just consider uh, that as a dummy activity. So let's say let's represent I as the dummy activity and whose duration let's say of zero weeks and it represents end of the project. So uh, with this we'll have a start date and we'll have an end date and so we just jump on moving the AON diagram. So AON diagram something looks like this. So here you just consider all the activities that is eight activities plus one dummy activity indicating the end of your project. And uh, you can just uh, make in any way uh, which you desire. So I just considered in this way. So it looks like neat a diagram. So uh, first of all, what you need to do is uh, you need to identify which all are the immediate predecessor. So predecessor is something which comes first. So uh, for activity A, uh, when I say this one, so it does not have any immediate predecessor because it's given empty. And so you don't assign any uh, arrows before it. Uh, similarly for B, you have a similar case. Uh, but for C, if you see immediate predecessor is A. So uh, you can have this arrow like C is dependent on A or A is the immediate predecessor of C. Similarly, A and B is the immediate predecessor of D. A and B is the immediate predecessor of D. And C and D is the immediate predecessor of E. C and D are the immediate predecessor of E. So similarly, in this way, you need to uh, draw this uh, arrows and you just need to complete this diagram. And the final activity that the dummy activity would be depending on just a activity before that. So uh, that's represented by this blue arrow. Uh, now what you need to do is you need to assign the uh, duration that is ti so that I represent by ta in place of i I just replace it by the activity since i represents this all activity so uh, the activity completion time for first activity that is a is two weeks I will just only write the number and I will not write the units uh, then you have tb as three just put the values then you have tc as four then td you have 3 then you have te as 8 then you have tf tf you have 3 then you have tg that is 2 
and th that is you have 3 and finally for ti you have 0 since we have assigned here as 0 weeks uh, now what you need to do is you have to go in our two phases so the phase when we'll be calculating a parameter or a value called as ei that represents the earliest start time for any activity i means like uh, if you have been given some activity prior then it is assumed that you complete that activity first and then you do the current activity so there is a condition on this that all preceding activities have been finished then and only you will start this at the earliest means there will be a deadline given before that you have some time or you have some efforts in manpower and time so that you can just initiate that task so that value is or uh, that parameter is given as EI uh, next you need to calculate the values of EI for all these activities A to I now you have to move this A1 diagram in a forward way that is from left to right uh, for calculating this EI values so uh, the value for EC that is the earliest start time for any current node is given by the uh, summation of predicate value which is there at the predecessor that is the earliest start time of the predecessor plus the time of the predecessor that is the activity completion time so uh, with this we start calculating values so uh, first we have the value of A so value of A uh, the earliest start time of A, we don't have any earliest start times, we just only have the duration that is Ti and so we initiate it to 0 and we assume, we write a comment here, we assume uh, we start at time 0. Similarly, we have for EB, we don't have any uh, values or predecessor for it and so uh, we just mark it on the same basis. But if you consider for C, C is here and it has an immediate predecessor that is A. So it is given by EA that is the earliest start time of its predecessor that is its predecessor is A that is of predecessor of C is A and its activity completion time. So that is given by 0 plus TA that is 2 you get the value as 2. And then for ED, ED uh, in this case you have two immediate predecessor one is A and one is B so in this case what will you do is you consider the maximum of these two uh, values or the summed uh, products so what you have is uh, you have max of EA plus TA this one which is already there and you have EB plus TB so that gives you max of 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 3 and you will consider the max value that is 3 then you have value of EE uh, which is max of EC plus TC and then you have ED plus TD you can just check this diagram above and you have 6 of 6 that is max of both these are 6 only now you need to calculate the rest all value so I will just keep the diagram aside intact I will just not change because we also require it for calculating the other parameters so it will just help us out for understanding how we are moving on this A O N diagram next after uh, calculating EE we have EF so EF is given by EC plus TC and its value is 2 plus 4 that is 6 then you have value of EG EG is E uh, it's EE plus TE that is 8 plus 6 we have 14 and then we have EH so EH also uh, it has two predecessors that is F and G so we have max of EF plus TF and EG plus TG which is max of 6 plus 3 and 14 plus 2 which is 16 so 14 plus 2 16 and this is 9 max of 9 and 16 is 16 then we have EI that is EH plus TH which is 16 plus 3 which is 19 and so we just complete this uh, EI calculation values for activities A to I and so we just come to the estimation that the minimum possible value 
for the entire project completion is 19 weeks minimum project uh, estimation time or completion time is just 19 weeks so after you calculate this this uh, gives rise to phase one so uh, now what you need to do is you need to calculate the latest start times so that is represented by a term called as li so li represents the latest start time for any activity and it does not assume any uh, preceding activities which to be finished so uh, you need to similarly calculate the values of uh, ei that is uh, which runs from a b up till i and in this you need to move in a here you moved in a forward way but here you will move in a backward direction and it will be from right to left and that you have to just do in the AON means here you just moved in this way for calculating the earliest start times now for calculating uh, the latest start times you need to traverse in this way that is from right to left so uh, let's begin it's very easy so uh, any value for example let's say let's uh, we want the value of li so li we just get from here so li value is 19 okay now uh, we have this uh, that is lh plus th gives rise to li so lh plus th gives rise to li and now we need lh so lh will be li minus th so uh, that we get as 19 minus 3 19 we have li as 19 here and t is th is 3 that is we get from here so from that table we get and similarly you need to calculate the values uh, that is we have lg that is 16 minus 2 that is we have 14 then we have lf that is lh minus tf that is 16 minus 3 that is 13 then we have le that is lg minus te that is 14 minus 8 that is 16 and similarly you will calculate just i will keep this in uh, place intact and i'll just calculate the other values as it is so that uh, it becomes easy for you to uh, have a check of all the values and it should be all greater than or equal to zero uh, then after you calculate le you have ld value so that is le minus td that is 6 minus 3 that is 3 then lc which has two uh, predecessors so here what you do is uh, when you have two predecessors you calculate the minimum uh, whereas in earlier start times you calculated the maximum so here you have the minimum of le minus tc and you have lf minus tc which is minimum of 6 minus 4 and 13 minus 4 which is 2 that is this gives rise to 2 and this gives rise to 9 then we have the value of lb that is uh, ld minus tb which is 3 minus 3 which is equal to 0 and then we have la that is minimum of c again uh, we have two predecessors lc minus ta and ld minus ta which uh, gives you minimum of 2 minus 2 and 3 minus 2 which you have the 0 that is minimum that is this is 0 and this is 1 so uh, you need to make sure that all the latest times all the latest times here are greater than or equal to 0 and at least at least one activity at least one activity has start time value as 0 in only in this case uh, where you calculate the uh, li values that is the latest start time we have this for lb and we have for la as well so now we'll just move forward what is the next step in this to be done so uh, there is a term in this uh, we call as the slack time or the float so that is nothing but the time which our project gets delayed uh, in which we cannot complete the project in that particular deadline so uh, we need to calculate the amount of float in this particular kind of uh, estimation so the amount of float or it is called as slack it is represented by 
एफ आई जिज इज गिवन बाई एल आई दैट इज दस्ट स्टार्ट टाइम माइनस द अर्लियस्ट स्टार्ट टाइम विच वी अर्लियर कैलकुलेटेड सो वॉट वी हैव वी विल जस्ट मेक द टेबल इयर सो एल जस्ट पुट इट एज आई देन वी हैव द वैल्यू ऑफ एल आई देन वी हैव ई आई एंड देन वी हैव एफ आई and so uh, we have uh, we'll consider only eight uh, activities in this not the dummy one so uh, we had from the earlier beginning just dummy one just was calculated for calculating the uh, li and ei values so a b c d e f g and h and so we'll just put the values and we'll just subtract and we'll get the uh, activity which is pointing and we'll just uh, do the inference from this table what we can assume so uh, we get the value of 0 0 just uh, put the from the tables uh, which you calculated from the earlier individual calculations so it's 14 and 16 and then we have here 0 0 then you have 2 3 and 6 and then you have 6 14 and 16 so this value That is f i is equal to l i minus e i. This comes zero. This comes zero. This is zero. This is zero. This is seven. Uh, this is also zero. This is also zero. So now what you can see in this, uh, you have only this one activity which has some uh, value which is greater than or equal to zero, but uh, rest all values are zero, 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 and zero. So what you can infer from this is any value with floats. which is having value of 0 is very critical to the project and it needs to be taken care with great uh, priority and uh, values which is uh, equal to 7 or something other value it's not that uh, having priority and so you can uh, take it lightly but not lightly but you can consider it in the later period of time but with activities of critical value having 0 needs to be taken with utmost care and so we can say that the critical activities in this case are the critical activities are you have a b c d e then g and h and non critical activities and non critical activities are you have f with value as greater than or equal to 0 which is 7 so uh, and 7 represents the number of weeks in which you can complete your project so well that was all regarding this solved problem on aon and cpm in software project management so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you found got educated by watching this video please do like share comment and most importantly don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching this video